Here we're gonna look at a nice viewer suggested problem. So our goal is to show that the product of any four consecutive integers is one less than a perfect square. So I've cooked up a couple of examples here. So notice that two times three times four times five is 120, that's 11 squared minus one. Three times four times five times six is 360, which is 19 squared minus one. And finally, four times five times six times seven is 840, which is 29 squared minus one. Okay, so let's maybe jump into the solution and notice that this will be equivalent to showing for all integers n. So let's say we've got integers n, n times n plus one times n plus two times n plus three plus one is a perfect square. Well, being one less than a perfect square means that when you add one to yourself, you are a perfect square. So most definitely we could just expand this thing out and then factor it as a perfect square. And that actually wouldn't be too terrible. But what I wanna do is a little more elegant. And that is I wanna symmetrize this product right here. And, well, there are a couple of ways to make it almost symmetric. You could move this to start at n minus one times n times n plus one times n plus two. But we can actually do a little bit better. Let's set x equal to two n plus three over two. So that means x is in one half plus z. In other words, it's not quite an integer. It is one half away from being an integer. Another thing that we wanna notice is via this construction, x is exactly between these two kind of middle numbers. So if we take one half away from x, we have n plus one, that's not too hard to check. If we add one half to x, we have n plus two. Okay, so that means that we can take our n times n plus one times n plus two times n plus three plus one and rewrite it in terms of x and this rewriting is a lot more symmetric. So this is gonna be x minus three halves, x minus half, x plus half, x plus three halves plus one. Great, so there my n is this x minus three halves. Like I said before, my n plus one is my x minus half, and then so on and so forth. But now we've got essentially the factoring of a difference of squares. This x minus half, this x plus half can be pushed together to give us like a nice thing. Same thing with the x minus three halves and the x plus three halves. So for my next step, I'm gonna take these two middle terms and multiply them together. And then these two last terms and also multiply them together. So let's see what that gives us. So we're gonna have x squared minus nine over four times x squared minus one over four plus one. So the red things combine to give us this and the purple things combine to give us this. Now we can just foil out this object right here. That's not too hard to do. We'll get x to the fourth minus, so it'll be 10 over four times x squared. And I'm actually not gonna reduce that fraction as it'll be more useful to have it unreduced later. So I'll write this as 10 over four x squared. And then we'll have plus nine over 16 from the nine fourths times the one fourth. And then finally, we've got plus one, but I'm gonna write that as plus 16 over 16. And this is where it actually all works. And it's because nine plus 16 is a perfect square. So all of this is kind of built off of the fact that three, four, five right triangles exist. So that's actually pretty nice. So let's maybe go ahead and write that. We've got x to the fourth minus 10 over four x squared, and then finally plus 25 over 16. Okay, next we can notice that this 25 over 16 is really five over four squared. This 10 over four is two times five over four. That means we've got a perfect square binomial there. We can factor this as x minus five over four, sorry, I should say x squared minus five over four, quantity squared. 
But now we'll put our value of x back in here. So our x is 2n plus 3 over 2. So that gives us 2n plus 3 squared over 2 squared, which is 4, minus 5 over 4. And then all of this is being squared. Now next we can multiply this out, so that's not too bad. We can multiply this out and we'll get 4n squared plus 12n, and then finally plus 9. Then the 9 minus 5 will give us 4, so we'll be left with 4n squared plus 12n plus 4 all over 4 quantity squared. Now we can factor a 4 out of the numerator and cancel it with the 4 in the denominator, leaving us with n squared plus 3n plus 1 quantity squared. So we've achieved our goal of showing that n times n plus 1 times n plus 2 times n plus 3 plus 1 is a perfect square. And that's a good place to stop.